functions of ans in easy way autonomic nervous system is having the two divisions one is the sympathetic system and another one is a parasympathetic system so these two divisions can maintain the homeostasis in the body but how these are acting at the different organs at few of the organs they may act in opposite direction and at few of the organs they may act in a similar way and at few of the organs only one division is going to work so in this video we will see how these two divisions are work at the different organs and how we can easily understand the functional roles of the autonomic nervous system so generally we know that under stressful condition the sympathetic system is going to be activated and parasympathetic system is going to be activated under the rest or digest conditions that's why the action of sympathetic system is called as fight or flight response and parasympathetic system is called rest or digest response so just by remembering that the sympathetic system is going to be activated under stressful conditions we can easily understand the functional roles of the autonomic nervous system what happens under stress suppose we are under stress what we require we require the more blood supply because in order to work under the stress our cells require more blood supply along with the blood supply the cells also need the more oxygen supply and finally we need more energy in order to fight against the stress so under activation of the sympathetic system blood supply is increased oxygen supply is increased and energy is going to be more produced so just by remembering these points now we can easily define how the sympathetic system can work under stressful conditions now let us see what is the response of the sympathetic system under stressful conditions and we can simplify that at most of the organs parasympathetic system will work in a opposite direction so let us see what happens at the different organs so first of all is the heart so in order to increase the blood supply the heart should be activated which increases the cardiac output so that the all the cells are getting the the adequate blood supply under stressful conditions so what happens to the heart by the sympathetic division so sympathetic system results in the increase the rate of contraction as well as increase the force of contraction by increase the rate and force of contraction the cardiac output increases thereby blood supply increases then what is the role of parasympathetic system parasympathetic system is working under rest or digest conditions where it is having the quite opposite actions so parasympathetic system normally decrease the rate of contraction and decrease the force of contraction so in this way under stressful conditions the heart is working to increase the blood supply which is mediated by sympathetic system now let us take another organ lungs so what happens to the lungs all we have seen in that under stressful conditions we need more oxygen supply so again the sympathetic system works on the lungs so that it produces the bronchodilatation as the bronchioles are dilated more oxygen is going to be supplied to the cells quite opposite action is observed with the parasympathetic system so parasympathetic system produce bronchoconstriction next what happens to the liver so liver is one of the organ which is uh, respond for the production of the glucose from the non carbohydrate sources so sympathetic system can stimulate few of the metabolic pathways in the liver which increase the glucose production but interestingly parasympathetic system is not having any effect here otherwise the glucose levels will fall when we are under the restful conditions so at the liver only sympathetic system is working to increase the glucose production and the organ is the eye under stressful conditions what happens to the eye suppose we are writing an exam and we are going to see one question the question is not clear then in order to see the question what we are going to do we are going to dilate our eyes so by pupillary dilatation we can observe the situation in a clear way so under stressful conditions the the eye the pupil size is going to be increased so sympathetic system can produce pupillary dilatation quite opposite action is observed with the parasympathetic system that is pupillary constriction gi smooth muscle so what happens to the motility of this gastrointestinal smooth muscle so sympathetic system is going to decrease the motility whereas parasympathetic system is going to increase the motility this is again we can visualize that under stressful conditions our cells require more blood supply though so that the blood supply from the gi tract is going to be diverted to the what are the systemic blood vessels 
so the motility of the sympathetic system may be reduced because of the less blood supply whereas parasympathetic system which is working under restful conditions increase the motility of the GI tract blood vessels what is the response of the sympathetic system on the blood vessels under stressful conditions for example we are running then we require more blood pressure so sympathetic system will produce the vasoconstriction which increase the blood pressure on the other hand parasympathetic system produce vasodilatation which results in the decrease in the blood pressure now in this way we can remember what is the action of sympathetic division at the different organs under stressful conditions and quite opposite actions are observed with the parasympathetic system but this discussion is a oversimplification because we are going to discuss the actions of the autonomic nervous system by taking a fact that sympathetic system is stimulated under stressful conditions but we can also see some of the exceptions to this type of generalization now let us see the exceptions for example at the lungs we have seen that sympathetic system can produce bronchodilatation because sympathetic system increase the oxygen supply on the other hand parasympathetic system produce bronchoconstriction but actually at the lungs the sympathetic system is having no innervation that means it is not having no nerve supply but still it can produce the bronchodilatation similarly at the liver again the sympathetic system produce the glucose production whereas parasympathetic system is having no effect that means even we have oversimplified our discussion there are a lot of exceptions to this generalization so now let us go in detail how these two divisions are work and where these two divisions are working oppositely as well as where they are working in a similar way so in order to understand the functional roles of ans let us divide the functional roles into the four divisions so group a where both sympathetic and parasympathetic innervations are present with opposite actions so here innervation means nerve supply that means the group a includes the organs where both sympathetic and parasympathetic nerve supplies are present and uh, these two divisions are working in opposite directions group b both sympathetic and parasympathetic innervations are present with similar actions group c only sympathetic innervation is present that means at these organs there is no parasympathetic innervation group d only parasympathetic innervation is present so now by dividing the functional roles of this ans into four divisions we can easily understand how these two divisions are going to maintain the homeostasis in the body before going to the discussion of group a let us see what are the receptors involved with the parasympathetic system as well as sympathetic system parasympathetic system mainly working by the muscarinic receptors which can be classified as m1 receptors which are present within the cns as well as the gastric parietal cells and m2 receptors which are mainly present on the heart and m3 receptors are mainly present on the smooth muscle as well as the glands and here m1 receptors are excitatory m2 receptors are inhibitory and m3 receptors are again excitatory that means m1 and m3 are excitatory and m2 is inhibitory in nature and still m4 and m5 receptors are also present but their functional role is not completely clear similarly adrenergic receptors are alpha 1 receptors which are present mainly on the smooth muscle particularly they are abundant on the vascular smooth muscle and alpha 2 receptors are mainly present presynaptic and beta receptors are mainly coupled with the increase in the cyclic kmp they can be classified as uh, beta 1 receptors which are present on the heart and beta 2 receptors which are present on the smooth muscle and beta 3 receptors which are present on the adipose tissue these are the primary targets of uh, adrenergic receptors so just by remembering these now let us go how the sympathetic and parasympathetic system are working and which receptors are involved at a particular organ and we can observe that at the smooth muscle sympathetic system is present as well as parasympathetic system is present sympathetic system is working through two receptors one is the alpha 1 receptors and another one is the beta 2 receptors and at the parasympathetic system is equipped with the m3 receptors so what is the action of the sympathetic and parasympathetic system on the smooth muscle alpha 1 receptors are excitatory in nature thereby they produce uh, muscle contraction 
and beta 2 receptors are inhibitory in nature they produce relaxation and parasympathetic system works through the m3 receptors which, which are again excitatory in nature so again they produce contraction so in this way wherever we go parasympathetic system produce contraction of the smooth muscle working through the m3 receptors but sympathetic system can produce both contraction as well as relaxation so whenever it requires contraction it works through the alpha 1 receptors and whenever it requires a relaxation it works through the beta 2 receptors so if we understand these receptors now we can discuss how these two divisions are working to maintain the homeostasis in the body so let us go with the discussion of group a where the both sympathetic and parasympathetic innervations are present and both of the divisions are working quite oppositely so group a let us take the sympathetic system and parasympathetic system so one of the organ including the group a is the heart all we have seen that sympathetic system can increase the rate of contraction force of contraction thereby cardiac output increases and sympathetic system can also increase the automaticity automaticity is the ability of generation of uh, impulses by the non pacemaker cells so sympathetic system can increase the rate of contraction force of contraction cardiac output and automaticity on the other hand parasympathetic system acting quite oppositely it decrease the rate of contraction decrease the force of contraction thereby cardiac output also decreases and it also decreases the av conduction atrioventricular conduction is going to be decreased by parasympathetic system and sympathetic system can produce all these actions by beta 1 receptors which are coupled with the increase in the cyclic amp on the other hand parasympathetic system works through the m2 receptors which are coupled with the decrease in the cyclic amp we can clearly observe that the stimulation is produced by the increased levels of cyclic amp and inhibition is produced by decrease in the levels of cyclic amp within the heart but parasympathetic system can also inhibit the heart by opening of the potassium channels so in this way heart is one of the organ where the sympathetic and parasympathetic systems are working quite oppositely second organ is the eye within the eye we can see the two targets one is the pupil and second is the ciliary muscle pupil is having the two types of muscles like the dilator muscle and constrictor muscle sympathetic system works on the dilator muscle where it produces a constriction and parasympathetic system works on the constrictor muscle where again it produces a constriction but by constriction of the sympathetic system on the dilator muscle sympathetic system produces pupillary dilatation whereas parasympathetic system produces pupillary constriction so even both produce the constriction of the muscles the effects are quite opposite sympathetic system produces pupillary dilatation and parasympathetic system produces pupillary constriction now what is the action on the ciliary muscle sympathetic system is having the less effect on the ciliary muscle and it can produce somewhat uh, relaxation whereas parasympathetic system produces contraction so in this way the main action of the sympathetic system on the pupil is the pupillary dilatation whereas parasympathetic system pupillary constriction but here the receptors involved with these actions are somewhat different sympathetic system can produce a constriction of the dilator muscle by alpha 1 receptors we know that alpha 1 response for the constriction and beta 2 is for relaxation so dilator muscle is constricted by alpha 1 receptors and ciliary muscle is relaxed by beta 2 receptors we can see that sympathetic system can produce both constriction as well as relaxation where constriction is by alpha 1 receptors and relaxation is by beta 2 receptors and parasympathetic system can produce a constriction through the m3 receptors here we have to remember that by constriction of the dilator muscle the pupil size is going to be increase which results in the pupillary dilatation